Welcome to the prophetic ministry of Prophet S.M. Igbe and Prophetess Faith Igbe of Christ Restoration Bible Church International. It is a home of salvation, deliverance, and restoration. You'll be blessed as you listen to God's word. Is being cleansed. Thank you, Lord. You are the one in charge of our lives. Glory, hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our midst. Begin to thank the Holy Spirit. Begin to talk to the Father. Lord, we worship you. We exalt you. your mercy. Let every accusation be brought down. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every power that is here to stand against me, I'll stand against my blessing, wherever they are coming from. Lord, let them be silenced. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed. I am made whole. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I prophesy to somebody every broken spirit here be restored in Jesus name lift up your hand say every demonic gathering against this gathering we command them to scatter yes every evil was spoken against us we arrest it right now and it shall not prosper in our lives in the name of Jesus say I take charge of my atmosphere we take charge of our atmosphere we release the blood of Jesus. We release the power of the Holy Ghost. We release the fire of God. We arrest contrary spirits. We arrest contrary spirits. Every spirit that is not of God, let them be arrested. Let them be chained. 
with uncountable chain and sentenced out of this place in the name of Jesus every lying spirit we come against them they are conquered we subdue them they are under the feet of the Lord Jesus in Jesus name we pray and the people of God said say I'm no longer condemned say I am free say my past is over in the name of Jesus Christ and the people of God shout I prophesy to you this week will be a, a week of signs and wonders for you it will be a, a week of testimony it has started and it will not stop I prophesy to you you that is asking God for that miracle for that signs and wonders receive it in the name of Jesus I command those of you that your doors of blessing favor has been closed I command those doors to be opened I command them to be opened in the name of Jesus I prophesy to somebody wherever your keys and answers and solution has been stolen I command it to return back to you take it right now in the name of Jesus take back your keys of answers and solution receive it now in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you the enemy you saw yesterday you see there no more let your enemies be caged let them be put in cage in the name of Jesus I command the veil that cover your life that cover your glory to burn to ashes I command the veil that cover you to burn to ashes in the name of Jesus I'm not hearing your amen shout amen several times shout amen several times I command, I command, I command the dominion of darkness over your life let that dominion of darkness fall the dominion of darkness over your atmosphere lift up your hands they are crumbling somebody is a slave and a tax master over somebody but it is the will of God to set the captives free I command the dominion of darkness over your life over your atmosphere those that are claiming ownership over your life those that are saying because you don't go to the evil meeting they go to that you don't you are not qualified to receive I command all those dominion of darkness to crumble in your life let them crumble in your destiny let them crumble all around you in the name of Jesus this week you will hear that your enemy has been put to shame this week you will hear that your enemies have been put to shame this week you will hear bad news from your enemy and they will hear your good news I said this week is a week of celebration it's a week of jubilation can you jubilate and celebrate this is your first week in the uh, first Sunday of the month of June this week will be an extraordinary week it will be a week that you have not seen before begin to experience signs and wonders receive it receive it receive it in the name of Jesus you don't know I am prophesying by the spirit wherever you have been subdued they have subdued you they say you will not emerge they have subdued you they say no one will know you exist today the power that have subdued you the power that are subduing you the powers holding meeting against you all the powers are crumbled all the powers they fall I command fire on them every witchcraft spirit I bring them down in the name of Jesus say Holy Ghost every witchcraft spirit fall every money spirit fall every evil altar fall, every unknown evil altar fall, every wickedness fall every family idol they fall, bring them down bring them down, bring them down, bring them down bring them down, bring them down I bring down family idol I bring down witchcraft tool all the dominion of darkness they are falling forever can I hear your elbow shout amen three times Amen. Amen. Hey. You are a winner. Hallelujah. <laughs> I say to you by the Holy Ghost that this month is your month of uncommon favor. The doors that were shut against you before they are hereby opened in the name of Jesus. Uncommon favor will locate you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's 
your word of direction that is called prophetic direction for the month we have prophetic direction for the month and for the week amen i hope you are with your hanky according to the direction two hankies one you will use to wipe away all your common favor the other one will be your mantle wherever you are going for any appointment you just remember you connect with the prayers and connect with the prophetic direction of the month that's how god will lead you you heard what i'm saying that's how god will lead you according to the word that is released to you and to your atmosphere i pray for you may your doors of uncommon favor be perpetually opened and no power will shut it in Jesus' name. So we want to now talk about the word of God. Remember, we have been talking about the end time minister of the gospel. And by grace of God today, we, the spirit of God is asking us to ask us. God is asking you a question this morning. What is your purpose? As a believer, what is your purpose? Can you ask your neighbor, what is your purpose? As a Christian, have you asked your neighbor? Praise the Lord. Defining purpose, I can do it in my words. I see purpose as the reason behind a, a motive or why somebody is created or why a program is there. I said purpose is the re reason behind any motive. Purpose is the reason why a person is created. This time around, we are streamlining it to a Christian, a believer. As a believer, why am I created? Amen? We have to look and I said before during the testimony that if the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. If the reason you were created is not known, you will abuse it. Your life here on earth, you will not have a fulfillment. If you bought a beautiful cup in your home and you don't know the reason why you bought that cup, Anybody can use that cup anyhow or a plate. In your plate, in your home, there are different uh, vessels in your house. Uh, I'm talking about your different uh, plates in the house. You have beautiful ones that you kept. When big people come to your house, when honorable people come to your house, you bring out those plates to serve them. Is it not so? But if you do not keep them very well, uh, people can come, anyone can enter your house and use it to do anything. Amen? Plastic are in your house. Plastic plates are there. Plastic cups are there. And uh, there are breakable ones, beautiful ones, ceramics. All of them are kept in different places. All of them are there to serve different purposes. But as a believer and as a human being, why are you here on earth? I want you to ask your neighbor very well. What is your purpose here on earth? You see? Praise the Lord. I would like us to go to the Bible because many don't know why they are here on earth. Many don't know who they are. And because of this, they can go anywhere, act anyhow, go any, taking everything, anything, anyhow. Their life has no direction. A life without a purpose has no direction, has no meaning. In fact, it will become a problem to others. Let us go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. I want us to read verse 26 quickly. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, I want you to mark image and likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and have and over every creepy thing that creeped upon the earth. Verse 28 And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion 
over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see, here you can see the purpose of man there. Is to what? Number one there we saw that we saw the image and likeness of God. The image and likeness of God. What is the image and likeness of God? What do we see there? What sums it all is that God, the image and likeness of God is summed up in love. Say love. Amen? And we saw love there. So we are going to see so many things about God. And the Bible told us that he created us after his image and after his likeness. If somebody asks you now, as a Christian, who are you? What is your purpose here on earth? So, after God creating us in his purpose, that is in his image and likeness, he gave us an assignment. So, individually, we all have our assignment. I want to bring out some noble people in the Bible that demonstrated their assignment. Number one here, we have Jesus Christ. Can we go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18? Can we all read together, church? Verse 18 to 19. Please, let's quickly read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, so to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Wow, amen? If you go to 1 John, just write 1 John chapter 3, we are looking at divine purpose. Because after all of this, Jesus says he is going to be with the Father. Where he stopped, you and I will stop, continue from there. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 8b. I'll read quickly. It says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Is it in your Bible? So, that is it. We have seen the purpose of Jesus Christ. Then, let us also see if there was a purpose, an assignment for Abraham. Now, another person we are seeing again in the Bible is Father Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. Verse 2. And Look at what God is saying. And I will do what? And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be what? A blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Say purpose. Say divine purpose. I'm not hearing you very well. Say, I have a purpose. We saw Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verse 28, 31, and 33. Quickly, amen. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Okay, no, please, let's read it very well. From 28. And when she saw him, she was troubled in, his, in her at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Is somebody finding favor this morning? Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. 
I pray for every one of you here. May you find your purpose in life in Jesus' name. There are many people asking God, what is my purpose? What is my assignment? Many people are confused today because they don't know who they are. Many are confused today because they don't know the gift of God upon them. Many are confused today because they have no direction. Their light of direction has been taken from them. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do what they should do. But I'm praying for you. Concerning this message, you will find your purpose. I say you will find your purpose in the name of Jesus. Because if you don't know your purpose, you will abuse your time, you will abuse yourself. So how, what do we do so that we'll be able to fulfill our purpose? First of all, I want to say to you, defining a purpose and finding a purpose in life is not an easy thing. It's not easy at all. But by the grace of God, if God makes you to understand who you are, you will be able to learn all the ways of the Lord and know how to fulfill your purpose. I pray for you, confusion is taken away from your side. This is your amen. Let it be very dynamic. Amen. Hallelujah. I have given you an example of Jesus Christ, Abraham, and Mary. I want us to know that every one of us that is here on earth, you are not an accident. I don't care how your father met your mother. Some of you were giving birth out of wedlock. The truth is that you are here on earth. Amen? I don't care to know if you lost your father or your mother. And now you are believing that God brought you to this world to, set, uh, to suffer. Child of God is a lie. The reason you are from that family, the reason you are from that background, the reason you are from that community, there is a purpose for it. I said there is a purpose. The reason you married in a certain family, there is a purpose behind it. Everything you are doing on earth, sometimes it looks very vague, it looks very blurry, as if everything is bleak, as if nothing good is coming out of what you are doing. Hey, 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 child of God, by and by, you shall know that there is a purpose for that thing you are doing. As far as it is in the will of God, I want you to know that the Bible says all things were created for the pleasure of God. They were everything was created for the pleasure of God. Say, I am created for the pleasure of God. Say, I am created for the glory of God. Say, I am created to be a solution. I am created after the image and likeness of God. Say, I am created in love. Say, I am love. My father is God of love. We saw that in John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God is at work in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, look up. This particular message is going to bring you from the place of obscurity to the place of prosperity. Because many people are wandering all around. This is why they become a vessel of destruction in the hands of the devil. Many people today, they are in different positions where they are not supposed to be. But I want to say to you, if you were put or disposition because of the enemy, God is repositioning you. I'm not hearing your amen very well. God wants to reposition your life. Say, my father, wherever my position has been manipulated, I call for a reversal. Do you know, like here, I am here in Abuja, FCT, Nigeria. I used to see a, a mechanic, it's possible for a mechanic to tell you that it's a medical doctor. Even as a pastor, we come across many of them. Hallelujah. It's possible for somebody that has not gone to school before to be answering doctor. Even people want to respect you in that city. You walk into a place, maybe you dress very well the way they saw you. They want to help you carry your things to where you are sitting down. All of a sudden, that usher start to name you doctor. They, they see it as a way to honor you. But every fake identity is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a glorious thing inside of you more than that accolade. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
I said there is something that you carry inside of you that is more than what people are trying to give you. I come against every false identity. Child of God, I'm not. I said I come against. I come against every false identity. Do you know there is something that is unique about you? Hallelujah. We all of us as children of God, we have a unique calling. One call is to fulfill the purpose of God. Our other purpose is to do the will of the Father. Number one, purpose of everyone here as a believer is the will of God. Is to fulfill the will of God. That is your divine purpose. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Is to do the will of God. Number two is to serve God. Number three is to serve others. Amen? The gift that is upon you is not only for you, it's to help others. Is it true or false? If, it, I, if I am anointed, if it's not for God that anointed me, I could have taken this anointing, let it be working for me and me and myself alone. But the anointing on me is to save, is to heal and to deliver others. Praise the Lord. I prophesy to you. May you be a solution to your word. I said our number one purpose on earth is the will of God. Remember Jesus Christ when he was on the cross, when they hung Jesus on the cross. He was about to die. He was passing through so much pain. He said, Father, let this cup, if it be your will, let this cup pass through me. And let it go. Let this cup of suffering, the cup of death, let it be taken from me. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, Father, but let your will be done. We saw it in Jesus Christ. When he was here on earth, his will was to do the will of God. How many of us are saying, oh God, let your will be done in my life? Can I see your hand? Say, Heavenly Father, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be my will. Amen. I'm talking to us how to handle the will of God concerning our life. How to handle our life. How to fulfill our purpose. Your purpose must be according to the will of God. Many of us, we have found vocations. We are in marriages that we did not ask God about. Everything about you must be according to the will of God. As a child of God. That job you want. The husband you want to go into. That's everything that you want to do. They must be in alignment with the will of God. Why? Because there is a purpose he created you. Amen? I pray for you. May you fulfill your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we remember Esther? We remember Esther in the Bible. The children of Israel, they were having challenges in a strange land. Remember, any time children of Israel, they, they offend God, he will make other nations to suffer them. They will go on slavery. But a time came, there was a man called Mordecai who has a niece. And this niece's name was Hadassah. And Hadassah, uh, by the grace of God, was elected to become one of the queens in that uh, king's palace in the land where they were. That land was called Shushan. They were in that land. But a time came, a man that was called Mordecai, a man that was called Haman, had a problem, a fight with Mordecai. And this man was very close to the authority. And he was very close to the king. And he inquired, who is Mordecai? And they told him Mordecai was a, an Israelite, that he was an Israelite, that he was a Jewish man. And he said, God Haman said, this Mordecai is too full of himself. Because of Mordecai, Haman wanted to annihilate all Israel. Meaning to wipe out the race of Israel. Because many nations, they were under that chief or the king of Shushan. But by the grace of God, there was somebody like Esther. How many Esthers do we have in the house? Hallelujah. I pray for you. May you be a solution. Amen. Concerning Esther, her purpose was not to save her father's house. It was to save the whole Israel. A whole nation. Some of you, your purpose might just be for your father's house or for you and your immediate family or for your community or for that place where you are to shoot for the glory of God. And by the grace of God, very soon, opportunity will show to you who you are. 
I say opportunity will show to you who you are. If they had told Esther when all of them were on their journey to that land that this land you are going, a problem is going to come or you are the one to rescue them. She will look at her identity. The Bible told us that Esther was an orphan. No father, no mother. So Mordecai, the uncle, had to take her along. And but the Bible told us God gave her a gift of beauty. Apart from beauty, favor was inside of her. And when they got to the land, that king has already signed all the children of Israel to be annihilated. Then, something has already happened. I am, I am seeing somebody, God is changing your position. I am seeing somebody, God is repositioning your life. I am seeing somebody, God is bringing out the purpose he created you. Glory, hallelujah. Because people didn't know, they don't know you. Esther was just like an ordinary house girl to Mordecai, child of God. I don't know how you see yourself. I don't know how you feel about yourself. Say, I am a person of purpose. Can you imagine? These people were going to be killed. All of them were going to be wiped out as a race. But Mordecai met Esther. He said, Esther, you have been favored to be one of the queens of the king. Esther, go and speak on behalf of our nation. Or else, we shall be destroyed. Esther was afraid. Mordecai told her, who knows if at this such a time like this that God brought you to this land. Esther, if you will not fulfill your divine purpose, God will raise another deliverer. May you not be replaced in Jesus' name. I say, may you not be replaced in Jesus' name. Where I am going is this, child of God. As all of these are going on. And the divine purpose of Esther was going to be fulfilled. Children of God, because of Esther, the whole Israel that were going to be annihilated, all everything was reversed. The people were no longer killed. Because of Esther, the people were saved. That was the divine purpose and assignment of Esther. That was the reason that little girl was taken there. Though she looked like a house girl. But yet it was a deliverer. Who are you? How do you see yourself? How are you talking down on yourself? How much are you telling people that I don't even know why I'm here on earth? How many of you are saying because your father is dead, your mother is dead, you have nobody to look unto? Child of God, look unto Jesus. Say, Father, there is a purpose for which I was created. And that purpose will surely be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Can I hear your amen very well? God is using you to fulfill an assignment. Yes, everybody has different assignments, whether Christian or whatever, whoever you are. But let your purpose be the purpose of God. Say, oh God, let my purpose be your purpose. Can it be so? So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to talk about the challenges of purpose. Yes. One thing is to define your purpose. Number two is to be able to fulfill it. Today, many people are struggling to fulfill their purpose. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth unto a man good, but the end thereof is destruction. What did I say? False identity. False purpose. Even myself that is standing here, whether in ministry, whether in relationship, I have made many mistakes. How many of us can say I have made many mistakes? I want to see your hand. I am number one. Too many mistakes. But I want to tell you, you will get there. I say you will get there. It's not time to condemn yourself. It's not time to say, uh, oh, my own is finished. Don't say I am in that room or something like that. Don't say so. Don't say that, oh God, nothing good is going to come out of Israel. <laughs> Amen. In all your challenges, it shall end up in praise and thanksgiving. What did I say? I said, your, all your trials and troubles, they will what? They will end up in thanksgiving and in praise. Amen. So, what are the challenges? What are the challenges of fulfilling our divine purpose? I reason it out that 
Number one, ignorance of the will of God concerning our lives. I told us that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. If you don't understand or you don't have discernment, you don't know who you are. So what is going to happen is that everybody becomes your advisor. You will begin to move all roads lead to where you are going. Whereas there is a way that seems right unto you or unto God for you. But you want to be moving here and there. What I said, number one, is when you don't know the will of God concerning your life. That is why God raised mentors. That is why God raised prophets. That's why we prophesy. Amen? We know in part and we prophesy in part. Praise the Lord. I pray for you. May you receive divine direction. Amen. Lack of divine direction is why people are where they are. Praise the Lord. This is why we have started a program that is called um, Raising the End Times Ministers. That will make a difference. And we came out with IPPMC. That is one of the uh, vehicles we are using. And we do that quarterly. Now, God told me that what is going to be happening, he will be using me to unlock people's gifts, to help them recover and discover who they are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Has that been happening in people's life? Has that been happening? Have I prophesied to any of you, this is your calling, this is your gift? Has God used me like that? Has God used the prophet daddy like that for you? That is it. Your divine purpose matters a lot. Divine direction. May God give you divine direction. How many of us are, say, are here and say, Oh God, give me my divine direction. How many of you are here? You say, Oh God, I need divine direction. Say, I need divine direction. Say it very well. Say, I need my divine direction. May God give you in the name of Jesus. When you are di divinely directed, child of God, you will not miss your mission on here on earth. When you are divinely directed, you will not do what? You will not miss your divine direction. Praise the Lord. That is number one. Divine direction is number one. Lack of divine direction is the reason many people cannot fulfill their assignment or their purpose on earth, which is a challenge. So the solution for that is your divine direction. Say, I receive in Jesus' name. Then the next one we see is lack of the word of God. When somebody don't have the word of God, when you don't know the word of God, child of God, that person will suffer so much. When a vehicle is made and is sold, the vehicle will have a manual. Is there a manual? Even the fridge you buy at home, do they have manuals? The manual is for what? It's for your direction. Is it not so? Teaching you how to use it. The word of God is our manual that is given to us. Through God, we are able to understand our purpose in life. For instance, you want to fulfill your purpose, there is a challenge. There is a word for that. Amen? One of the scriptures that can be used for that is what? Jeremiah 29, 11. For God knows the thought, he thinks towards us, there are thoughts of good, not of what? Not of evil. To do what? To give us an expected end. I pray for you. May God take you to an expected end. That one is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Amen? So that is number one, we say divine direction. Number two, I say lack of knowledge or lack of the word of God. You can say lack of knowledge because the Bible says, Hosea 4 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 says, lack of knowledge is the reason why people suffer unnecessarily. So how do we get knowledge? It's through the word of God. By the word of God, you will know that the will of God concerning your life. What is one of the things that may hinder us? Sickness, disease can hinder us. But what is God doing for us? Divine healing. If you don't understand that healing is yours, you may not know how 
to take care of this and fulfill your divine eh, purpose. You saw somebody came out and said that she came close to the anointing. That is me with all humility, all boasting is excluded. God put the healing unction on me so as to save souls. Hallelujah. That is that. Then another one, number four, why people cannot fulfill their destiny is sin. Say sin. But I thank God, Apostle Paul said to us, sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. What is sin? It's work of the flesh. When you break the law, it's sin. Anything that is not done by faith is sin. Amen? When you are committing sin with your body, when you are committing sin, God is telling you, I'm calling you to be a pastor, I'm calling you to serve at the altar, but yet you want to do the ways of the world. You want to follow the world. What does the Bible say to us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1? It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable uh, service. And he said that we should not conform to the world. I pray for somebody. Wherever sin wants to have dominion over you, let the power of sin be broken in your life. Sin will reduce a man to nothing. Sin brings shame and disgrace. Amen? I say sin will make people to look down on you. Sin takes away your dignity. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? Sin takes away dignity. You can imagine a servant of God. God brought people. Do you know, when I see a, 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 you know, you are a leader in a church or you are a group leader. You are fighting with people under you. With your flesh. I, I marvel. Do you know what I see? I count it a privilege for God to use me to lead people. Because I look at myself, I'm not qualified. Amen? For you to fulfill your purpose, you must understand how to use your mantle, your oil. Hallelujah. If not, the thing you try to train, the thing you try to amend, you will break it. Hallelujah. I used to see people, oh, that person talked to me roughly. That's why I don't want to come to church. Please, I beg of you. Don't stop going to church because there is a bigger picture. Ask, tell somebody there is a bigger picture. What is the bigger picture? The church is where disciples are raised for God. And you must be in the church. You cannot keep running. If you run from church A, you will meet the same people in church B. Let me tell you, what change is you, not others? What changes in you is how to accommodate everyone. Hallelujah. If you must fulfill your divine purpose, you must learn how to accommodate everyone. I am talking from the point of view of a leader, a pastor, a head of department, a unit head. Anytime you see yourself pointing to others, not pointing at you, you are a babe in Christ. You are a big time babe, a nephew. Say nephew. I'm not here. Say nephews. It's a babe in Christ. It's a Greek word for baby Christians. Amen? I have had my disciples, they corrected me several times. But some people, you cannot meet them more. Ha. Oh, don't finish that day. If you must fulfill your divine purpose, learn the way to apply your gifts. Amen? Learn the way to what? To apply your gifts. Just begin to take the point as they are coming. Learn the way to apply your gifts. You must learn how to talk to people. You must learn how to uh, carry people along. Look, re relate to people on individual basis. Amen? Praise the Lord. I am this kind of person that I'm Jim, 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 Jim. That's how God created me. I don't have apology over that. Amen. Everybody is unique. Say everybody is unique. Say I am unique. Amen. Look at the five fingers. This is the apostle. That is the prophet. That is the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. All of them have different disposition. What am I talking about? God created all of us differently. Amen. The ways of the pastor is different from the ways of the apostle and the prophet. I hope you know. I hope you know in time past, Prophet used to flog people. 
When they catch a witch like this, they will flog the witchcraft out of the body. But we don't do that. What is the mantle that is given to us? Is the mantle of deliverance. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You don't go now and be flogging somebody because he has witchcraft spirit. It's a spirit. When you lay hand, the spirit will be broken. Hallelujah. Amen. Deliverance can take that one away. So the prophets, those who have prophetic oil and uh, what you call it, evangelistic uh, oil, they are very harsh because they work so much with warrior angels. They work so much with what? With warrior angels. They work so much with judgmental angels. I mean the prophet and the, and the, the evangelist. You will see that fire, 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 fire all the time. But for you to be able to live in a community, you have to learn how to administer your gift. Say administration of gift. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am praying for you. May you be able to administer your gift. I'm not hearing your amen very well. If you don't do this, you might not be able to fulfill your purpose. The purpose of a pastor, of an evangelist, of an apostle, of a prophet is to gather, gather souls that are going to heaven. So if you, if you flog and chase all of them away because you say you want to be disciplining them or uh, you want to, and you don't do it well. Discipline is good because where there is no discipline, uh, you cannot see big people there. You cannot see elders there because they will be afraid children will throw stone on their heads. Amen. So we discipline in the house. Everyone maintain their cells respectfully. Amen. There is dignity in the house. So I'm not really now uh, discipline. But discipline should come. We don't discipline people to break them. We don't discipline people to chase them out of the church. That one is way out of it. If you're a leader of any department, people will not stay under you. They will run away. But I prophesy to you. I gather back everything that has been scattered in your life. I'm not hearing your amen, no. Because some of you are there, you have business partner as a Christian, you are working in an office, you are saying that nobody wants you, nobody wants to come close to you. God is using all of these things to correct you. Not only as a pastor, as a Christian that is a businessman, as a Christian that is a married man and a married woman. How do you use your oil? How do you use your gift? How do you administer your grace? Amen? Can we clap for Jesus? This clapping doesn't make any sense. So. Amen. One, one opposition of your uh, purpose is uh, the enemy. The enemy and your circle of influence. Say the enemy and the circle of influence. Devil doesn't want anybody to fulfill his calling. So he will surely bring trials and temptation. He will bring trouble. The more you are gathering, the more he's scattering. He can use any weapon to attack you. He can use lines. He can spread bad rumors about you. That's the devil. The devil will make people see your weakness. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. Oh. I said one of the reasons that is difficult for us to fulfill our assignment is the enemy. And I say one of the weapons of the enemy is to spread wrong, bad rumors about you. He can, they can use ganging up against you. They can use gossip. When all of these things are happening, it is to get to your mental status. I prophesy to you. Whatever mental challenges you are going through because of depression, because of bad rumors, bad news they spread about you, gossiping about you, they always point to your bad, bad mistakes, your wrong mistakes, but they will never talk about the good you have done for them. It can make a purposeful person to be dampened in the spirit. God is here to encourage somebody. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. If you are there, let this word bring you healing. Amen. Let this word bring you deliverance. Amen. I say one of the purposes of one of the challenges for a purposeful person is the devil himself. He will use any tool. He can use delay to attack you. The more you want to move forward, the more they draw the rope. Going through the powers in your foundation. Going through generational curses. You see, people you think that they are failing in their assignment. It's not because they are not doing well. It's because they are fighting 
a spirit that is more than them. But I want to tell somebody, if you are like that, God is here to fight for you. This your amen is too down. I say whatever battle and trials you are going through with the devil, you will win the battle. I say you will win that battle. Don't cry. It's not time to be in the room and continue to, uh, you know, talk down on yourself. I am done for. I am finished. What is it that remains about me now? Anywhere I go, people don't like me again. They don't do. I will tell you the way out. Amen. All of us in one way or the other, we have been there. Praise the Lord. Nobody can battle with the vision of God concerning your life. Your divine purpose concerning your life, no power will bring it down. The only one that will bring it down is you. Say, my father. Nobody born of a woman can bring down my purpose. Say, I must fulfill my purpose. Child of God, may you fulfill your purpose. They will say, you have a purpose, they have a purpose. They want to bring your own down. They will not fulfill their own. Is it not so? Somebody have a purpose, you, you have your own. But they want your own not to be fulfilled. Will they fulfill their own? They go nowhere. They go nowhere. I want you to know, I'm still talking about the devil and your assignment. Let me tell you, when God call you for a divine purpose and assignment, Satan also call and follow you. So, what I just showed you is those that came that they want to join to fulfill the assignment. Whereas you are building, they are tearing down. There are always people like that in your ministry, in your sector, in your business, in your marriage. You are working for your marriage to work. But these ones, they say something to your husband at the back. They say something to you at the back. All they are doing is to separate your angels. I prophesy to you. Such people around you, God will frustrate them. Are you a pastor? Hey, you are building church. There are secret agents. God has showed me this several times, like I just showed you. There are always secret agents. As you are building, they are there to tear down. They are there to tear. They even dress up to go to people's houses one after the other. Are you still going to that church? What are you doing there? What are you doing there? Unknown to those that they go to meet, they are recruiting you into their kingdom. You are supposed to ask them, is it not Christ they are preaching in that altar? Even they preach holiness and, and deliverance there. What is your problem? Nobody. Once they catch their muggles, their muggles don't know how to ask questions. Why do you say I should leave that church? What is wrong there? They will be telling you, eh, the prophet has hate you. The man of God hates you. Lies and deception can make people not to fulfill their destiny. Every voice that is speaking to you, every negative voice that did not create you speaking evil to you, so that you will not fulfill your calling. Holy Ghost! The day God will open some people that the, that the enemy is using to attack you, some of you, if you don't have heart, you will faint. I was praying one day, God told me. There is somebody that took my picture to an altar to kill me. I said, me? God. <laughs> what did I do? He said, when that madness normally come on that person's head, he can do, she can do any, anything. He took my picture and told them that he want to kill me. That I have gold in my hand. He want the gold to belong to her. I pray for you. Any demonic eyes that is scanning you. Any demonic eyes scanning your life. Holy Ghost! You, I will not finish this today. I'm rounding it up. Faith in the word of God can help you. You have to have faith in Christ. Believe him. He's able to save you. He's able to help you fulfill your purpose. Don't run away from purpose. Say, I will arise. My, I will arrive at my destiny. For you to fulfill your purpose, you must learn to sow and sacrifice. Say, sowing and sacrificing. Yes, I told her several times when I find out that a, a battle is too much for me to move ahead, I will just look for the most uh, expensive thing around me, something that is good, quality. I will sow. I sow up, I sow down. I sow to the ones that are less privileged, 
then I sow to those who are greater than me in ministry. That is what I do. But one thing I want to say to somebody, may your sacrifice not be cursed. Lift up your hands. Many of you have been sowing. You are asking yourself, why is this sacrifice not working? Lift up your hands. The Lord wants to visit you. I prophesy to your sacrifices. Any sacrifice you have given to God for the sake of breaking yokes, may those yokes be broken. Yeah. Foundational powers that go there to stop you, to stop it. May they be frustrated. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you favor, 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 favor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Sacrificing. How do you do that? You do that through seed sowing. You do that by raising battle seed. You do that when you give your offering, when you give your tithing. You make sure you do all the things that are needful. All the doctrinal uh, aspects of your life. Fulfill all of them. Hallelujah. And when you do this, God will use this to fight your battle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, I, I, I close like this. Being a disciple, so winning. You have to do the work of God. This is the reason. This is one of the greatest purpose God called us. Reasons that God called us. I said to do the will of God. Doing the will of God is serving him at the altar. Making sure you contribute to the church. Making sure that people come into the house of God. You remove them from the street. You remove them from the obscurity. You bring them to the light of God. You remove them from darkness to light. When you do this, you have a great place in heaven. And may the Lord bless you as you do this in Jesus name. I'm rounding up now. If you are there in case you don't know the Lord. Wherever you are watching me from. You are in the house. You are not genuinely born again. Or you will say you are a Christian. You profess to be a Christian. You are still locked up in your traditions. The tradition of men. The tradition of your family. You still bow down to small, small idols under your bed. You still go to places where you are not supposed to go. I mean as a Christian. Still going to use the services of witch doctors. And you know they don't bring out Bible when you get there. They only point you to the gods of your fathers. To demons. God is calling you to repentance. You cannot continue to deceive yourself. Where will you spend your eternity? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? People will clap for you. <laughs> but where will you spend your eternity? That's what matters. Money cannot take you to heaven. Plenty people will not take you to heaven. Fame will not take you to heaven. Go and read 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. He said all that is in the world. The lost of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life I build the biggest mansion on earth will not take you to heaven child of God, Jesus is calling you come back home, repent of your sin and he will show you mercy, bow before me, bow before the Lord, say heavenly father, have mercy on me deliver me from my self destruction, deliver me from the powers of this world, deliver me oh God, from my fallen nature Deliver me, Holy Spirit of God, from eternal damnation. Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are coming back to judge the living and the dead. On the last day, Lord Jesus, I will rapture with you. Show me mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. I will, quickly, how are you come? Your foundation is fighting you so much. I'm seeing shame and disgrace. I'm seeing shame and disgrace, rising and falling, gathering and scattering. God wants to deliver you. Okay? What is happening in your life now? I know you will not like it. God wants to deliver you. Will you allow Him to deliver you? Yes. So that you have peace gathering and scattering, rising and falling. Huh? God wants to fight for you. The same thing, you are experiencing certain things in your life. Eh? Delay, rising and falling. It's happening. God wants to stabilize you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. I will see you on, on Tuesday. You come on Tuesday. Your, there, there is a body concerning your family. Don't worry. 
there is a body in your ah oh, she's crying oh my god I'm seeing so much body Father Lord I thank you Jesus your body is being lifted God wants to lift your body body of the family from your heart problem are you walking don't cry Please. does anybody know you here who you invited her oh my god She helped me when I was doing you service. I, uh, she worked I, in an office or the, what? The husband was in the National Assembly. My yeah. son, name's Driver. But something happened. Something happened. They, they killed her husband. Doctor of God, put your hand in your heart. The Lord sent me to you. Peace. Peace. See me after the close of service. Today is your first time. Holy Father, give her peace in her heart. Peace. Peace in your heart. Peace in your heart. The Holy Spirit is by you to take away this body. Lord, take away this body. Will you make your mom proud? Lord Jesus. The God is dealing with right now. You have, this is a family member. And this family member is, um, Is negatively anointed, negatively anointed. Her own problem is just to cause trouble in the family. And her major target is you. She makes someone trouble with you and even bring katakata in the whole family. Do you have somebody like that around you? Yes, ma'am. But today, God said, enough is enough. I'm seeing a contract that is yours. I don't know if you want you to be a business woman. It is your own. I'm seeing God releasing that contract. Where God wants to give you money, that money coming back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, do not be afraid. Every, every spirit that steals, that kills and destroys, that wants to come near my testimony, let the hammer of heaven hammer them. I release the sword of judgment to cover my blessing. Any power come near it, sudden destruction for them. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. We believe you've been blessed by this message. You can reach out to us through the numbers on your screen now or on our social media pages, Facebook and YouTube. Remain blessed.